Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive JT. Couple of things to take care of today on the new Tundra, and I almost made a huge mistake. You see, I didn't quite do all of my research before I considered buying this mod, and it's quite involved, I think, for the Toyota Tundra. But before we get to that, there's a couple of things I need to take care of. First of all, I had the windows tinted on the truck about a week ago, and it's time for that first up and down. So we're gonna hop in here. You can see I still have the do not roll down, and I suggest you leave these on because there's been a few times when I've been out driving around that I went to go ahead and put the windows down after having them freshly tinted. By the way, I went 20% local place called Detronics here in South Texas. They do an excellent job. But anyway, this will save you from ruining your tent, believe me, even though, yeah, it may look a little tacky on there, but so what? It's just for a few days anyway, right? But it's been a week, so now it is time. We're going to go ahead and start the truck up find a place to put you guys I think like right there let's go ahead and start up and I'm gonna roll the windows down gonna have to kill the radio here in a second probably I'm assuming it's gonna kick on I forget where I left it at well if it kicks on then we'll go ahead and shut it off in a minute right I'm pretty sure it's on anyway let's go ahead we're gonna pull the thing off of here because I don't need this anymore and the one thing I always used to worry about with these stickers is, are they going to leave adhesive on here? Man, I can't uh, grab a hold of it. There we go. And you can see, whatever they use on these, fortunately, there's some dust, on the back of them does not leave adhesive on the surface, so that's good. Now, let's go ahead. You want to roll them all the way down and all the way up. And I usually do that a couple of times just to make sure that, you know, I don't have any issues. So let's go ahead. They are auto windows. So let's hit the button. Make sure there's no problem. There's down. Let's go all the way up. Going to do it again. And lastly, all the way up. You can see the little gap at the top there. All right, no issues there, that's good. My biggest fear is that I would do that and the film would catch and just rip off as it was going up and down. No problem there. Let's check the other side. Fortunately, I can, uh, I can hit the button over here. I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's go all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. And all the way up. Now, all I had tented were just the front two windows, so there's nothing to do anywhere in the back there. And you can see that was a success. Another productive window tinting uh, experience. Now, there's one other thing I want to check before we get to this big mistake I almost made. And that is, I have a bar. I used to call it the Gladi bar in the, uh, or board I should say, for the Jeep Gladiator. And it's the board that goes across the back of the bed. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, what I've got has been stored over here. And fortunately, I kept this. I didn't cut it up or do anything crazy. Let's go ahead and pull it out of here. Hopefully there's nothing living on the back of it. We do have some dust and crap on the bottom. But it is a, a board, it's a board, to go across the back of the uh, bed of the Tundra, and I'll show you why. Okay, what I've got, and this is what I did last time, I actually put some letters on here, I painted it black, of course, it is a 2x6, and it's to go across where the slats are in the truck so that you can put stuff, like if you have a tonneau cover or whatever, in the back part here without it rolling all over the front of the truck. So what I'm very curious about is to see if it actually fits. And I don't know if I'm tall enough to do this. Let's see, I'd probably put it like right here. And it looks to be a little bit long, I think. So let's get up in the truck. Thank you. 
It fit on the other Tundras I had, so maybe it's just angle at the moment. Let's find out. No, it's, uh, it's definitely not going to fit. So that means I'm going to have to cut it down a little bit. Uh, I'm a little surprised, so that must mean that the bed on the new Tundra is shorter or narrower than it was on the originals or the last generation. You can see uh, there's no way I'm going to get this thing in here. I mean, it just does not fit. So, I'm going to have to trim it down. Now, that's not a big deal. I don't really care about that. I'll just uh, cut it to fit. But, as you can see, it's going to go in between the rails, or the slots, on the back of the bed. That'll be a future project, take about two minutes, I, I hope, uh, to go ahead and cut that down, and then I'll have to repaint the edges. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about with this huge mod fail I almost had. Okay, we're at the front of the truck, and what I was looking at doing was replacing the grill on the front of the truck uh, with the Heritage Grill, or the Pro Grill, I guess. Going ahead and removing this one, and if you're not familiar with that grill, here's a picture of it. And there are a couple of problems. One, uh, it has the slot in it for the light, the LED light bar in the front. Now, I could add a light bar. Obviously, it probably would not be connected the same way that the factory uh, light would be connected. I'd probably have to run separate wires. Unless, of course, Toyota pre-wired it and pre-wires every Tundra uh, with the wiring harness. And that could be. I don't know. The other is fitment. Um, I think it fits. I'm not positive that it fits. Of course we have the TSS sensor down here to mess with. And by the way, going back to that LED light bar, if you buy just the insert, the Heritage Grill insert, it doesn't come with the uh, mounting hardware or bracket that you need for an LED light bar. So I could imagine you're probably going to get into a ton of money by the time you get the, the insert, which isn't that expensive. It shouldn't cost you any more than a couple hundred bucks, honestly. But the light bar, the wire, the wiring harness, all of that, you're probably about, yeah, I'd say somewhere between three and five hundred bucks into it, if you do it yourself. Of course, if you take it somewhere to have it done, you're going to pay probably double that. Who knows? Now, the other thing about doing this it's not like it used to be, where you could just pull off this front piece. At least not in any of the installs that I've seen. No, it doesn't work that way. Now, you have to go ahead and pop off the fender flares here a little bit on the sides to get to some clips behind the fender here, behind the front part of the bumper. You have to do that on both sides. There are a few different wiring harnesses that you have to disconnect depending on whether or not you have sensors and things integrated into this bumper. Who knows? The problem with pulling off that much of the truck, it's, it would be the whole front end, is that you can damage those clips. And obviously, if you damage the clips, it's never going to fit back on there the way that it did originally. And it may not anyway. If you go ahead and pull this whole thing off, I'm guessing it's probably not going to be as tight on the seams or maybe the fender guards here or flares are not going to fit in as well as they did before. Maybe you're not going to fit as seamlessly as you did around the lights. Who knows? There's opportunity for all kinds of problems. Now, that's really not the biggest reason that I wouldn't do it. I mean, I've taken the front end off of a Mercedes-Benz before uh, a daunting experience for sure, but it went really well. You just have to take your time. My thing is, is that this Heritage Pro grill is set up for more than just uh, a quick and simple replacement. You have to have the LED bar, and this is if you want it to look right. You have to have the LED light bar, and you got to make sure that you get it on there properly. I thought it would just be a pop and go kind of thing like it used to be before. Just pop this part of the grill off, 
take the insert out, put the newer insert in, and you're done. Now, there's one other thing, and I'm not positive if all Toyota Tundras have this or not, um, but the electronic louvers, somewhere in here, I think it might be down here, I'm not exactly sure, but you have to mess with that as well. Those are the things that control, I guess, airflow uh, for the engine. That's my guess. If you know more about those, please leave a comment and let me know. I would be curious. I'm not uh, real knowledgeable on those. So it's something that I've decided, at least right now, that I'm most likely, you never know, going to tackle. We're going to leave it as it is. I do like the grill the way that it is because it's black and the truck is black, so it all kind of blends in. There's no real reason to do anything else. If I had uh, a different colored truck and this was all chrome, I probably would be more likely to do it, but not something for me at the moment. Anyway, I just wanted to get on, kind of show you guys a couple of things, uh, give you a little insight into changing out that grill if maybe you're considering doing it. Uh, it is a rather involved task. Leave a comment. If you have done it, the front grill, let me know and let me know how it went with you. And if you have part numbers for the, that LED light in the bracketry, feel free to leave them down below. I'd love to know that too. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.